Okay, I think it's recording. Welcome. Yeah, to I'm going to click leave meeting. No, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for ruining the intro. <laughs> uh, welcome to Guyan in Web Browsers uh, bi weekly call, which is usually every two weeks. <laughs> it's 24th of uh, November 2020. Uh, short agenda this week because a lot of stuff is in flight and did not land yet. However, we got a pretty exciting PSA about uh, planning, Jessica. Indeed. Um, I suppose I can share my screen. This is not super, super useful to share my screen, but it's some eye candy and y'all don't have to look at my face. Uh, we are doing our annual planning, which is pretty wonderful. So you can um, view the info with this in the repo at github.com slash IPFS slash roadmap. Basically what's going on is uh, we are currently soliciting proposals for our major 2021 themes. Um, as you can see, there are 10 of them in place right now and more are welcome. Um, these are really all over, all over the gamut. Um, I will leave it to anybody on this call to read through these, but they're they're fairly uh, detailed in their proposals. This is one of the shorter ones, but they do follow a template. You can see what's on our agenda for discussing for 2021. You can add your own theme if you want to add an entire theme for consideration for the team, or you can be like me and go in and leave comments on like two thirds of these um, with additions, questions, and so forth. All input is more than welcome. I can stop sharing my screen. Or you can start sharing it again. Or I can keep sharing my screen. All right. Tell us about new companion, maybe. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about the new version of companion. Um, okay. Companion 2, 16, 0 came out. Well, GitHub tells me six days ago. Um, this is sort of one of those small but mighty releases. Um, DNS link websites, you have these two options here, copy snapshot link and copy IPNS path. Um, you can see them in situ here. I can just, I don't know, let's just load up. IPFS.io. I'm embarrassed that my search history contained Instagram. That was gross. But you'll see here, um, these have been Slightly rearranged, but now we've also got the ability to copy this snapshot link, um, a link to a snapshot of this tab in this moment in time. It will not change even if the content changes later. Cool thing about this is it's just basically linking to uh, the IPFS, the, the CID URL on the gateway, um, but this works for anybody. So if you just want to show somebody what's basically an archival link, that's actually super useful. Now, if you're the sort of person who likes to copy paths on DNS links, you can copy both the IPNS path straight from companion or the IPFS path straight from companion. And uh, we also did a little bit of visual housekeeping so that you didn't have 27 items in this menu. We went ahead and moved import and my node up here into the header so they're easier to get to and just kind of make a little more sense conceptually. So if you've not already upgraded, which you probably have because it did it automatically for you, this is here for you. Oh, additionally, uh, in response to comments that just popping up the release notes on launch of a new edition was super, super annoying, you now get this adorable little orange information icon that will take you to right now, these release notes. So like I said, small but mighty release, lots more stuff in the work, but a lot of things in flight, which might be a good segue to whatever it is that you are talking about, Lytle. Oh, gosh, my, my, my item is not as visual. So <laughs> I, will, I will try to make it interesting by uh, maybe sharing my uh, browser window. Can you see my window? It should be good. Yeah. So. Iraqli has been working on uh, improving IPFS in web browsers, like we <laughs> all do. But however, his work all is extremely day, day. His, his, yeah, his work is extremely important because it touches the lower levels of our stack. And the rec recent win I wanted to celebrate is uh, merge and release of this. Uh, PR and why it's important, it fixes the progress reporting 
when you import uh, files uh, to IPFS over HTTP API, uh, now um, you may use uh, this our HTTP client library and this latest version includes uh, mentioned uh, PR, uh, which fixes, if you look at our API for importing data, let's say IPFS add, um, you may pass various options. You can customize which uh, hashing algorithm you want to uh, use for chunking your data and uh, things like that. However, this one, uh, lets you pass a function which may be used for reporting uh, progress in your user interface. Uh, let's say you are importing a very big file and it takes a few good seconds to import and nothing happens. Now you are able to display progress. So I know it's trivial and uh, it sounds like something we should have done a long time ago. However, it's really difficult to do things like this in a way that works uh, both in Node and in a web browser and in a way that does not buffer entire thing in memory. So there's a lot of low level uh, problems that we had to solve and uh, huge thanks to Iraqli for sinking a bunch of time into uh, untangling this mess and uh, making it possible. So now people just uh, just install, uh, oh gosh, wrong tab, uh, just install the latest version. And that functionality will work. Uh, you may ask, hey, wasn't it working before? Well, it was working before. However, the problem was it was at 0%. And then when entire thing was uploaded, in, it jumped to 100%. So if you used uh, embedded JS IPFS uh, on your page, the progress reporting worked fine. However, if you use a remote node over HTTP client, you had this strange behavior when it immediately jumped from zero to 100%. That's no longer the case. And I believe um, many people will appreciate that, including uh, yours truly uh, regarding uh, web UI. Uh, this will land in the latest version of web UI soon. I won't say in the next two weeks because I said that last time. <laughs> However, uh, in the next release. So, so basically, um, the most obvious place you're going to see this is like in the drag and drop in Web UI. Um, a little drawer pops up, and you get the progress bar indicator. Uh, that will be a true sequential percentage kind of style progress bar instead of yeah. just spinning until it's done. Yeah. And I believe if you drag and drop uh, like multiple files, now you will see uh, not only like the generic total one, however, now you will see the progress per file. Uh, yeah. I believe, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. We'd, we'd baked that in. And um, when we discovered this progress reporting issue had sort of just killed it off, but we're going to hopefully bring that back to life. So yeah. it will be um, very cool. Yeah. Uh, I see uh, the last item is quick status update on pinning service integration. Uh, do we have it as two parts? Do you want to take one part and then me? I don't have I don't have much to offer. I just want to bring this up for uh, those of you who might be following along at home. Um, you know, <laughs> we've been working on this over over the fall, and um, you know, as with just about everything else, it proves to be a much larger project than we thought, um, and we are. I don't want to spoil the fun. I'll, I'll I'll let you talk about this, but we're 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 getting much much closer to wrapping up the Go IPFS stage of this work. Yeah. yeah. So it takes longer time because we are not just bolting pinning service support on top of Web UI. Uh, just a reminder is that uh, pinning service API is just like a generic uh, uh, HTTP API that pinning services can implement. Just to facilitate, uh, you give them CID and then they take care of keeping that data around. They take care of fetching data uh, on your behalf. Um, so uh, instead of just bolting uh, that uh, support for that API on top of web UI, we went uh, uh, path less traveled and we decided to implement support for pinning services in the core APIs. And that means uh, Go IPFS itself will uh, have support for remote pins. There will be 
pin, just like you have right now IPFS pin command, you will have a IPFS pin remote command, a family of commands which uh, let you add and remove and list remote uh, pinning services and then pin a specific CID uh, to a specific remote uh, service, check its uh, state, like pinning status, because you may be pinning a very big file. It may take time to fetch that. So you can decide to, oh, I don't want to wait for the pinning process to finish. I want to just get the request identifier and let it pin in the background. You may then like close your laptop or something as long as data is on the network available on the network, it will work. So uh, we are very close to landing uh, support for pin remote commands in Go IPFS. Uh, 0.8, uh, I believe, is scheduled to release candidate will land this week uh, or next week. Um, and we should have a support for remote pin commands in uh, Go IPFS uh, before Christmas, I believe. Uh, and then uh, when that lands, uh, we will have support in the mentioned HTTP client, which uh, I mentioned before. And then uh, Web UI will introduce user interface uh, on top of those commands. So uh, there will be no du work duplication. We will just leverage uh, APIs from your node. Uh, there will be when everything, when every piece lands, we will have support in IPFS desktop with the latest uh, Go IPFS 0.8 and the latest IPFS web UI. Uh, so there's a bunch of work nearly ready, waiting for either final review or uh, blog by uh, waiting for Go IPFS 0.8, but hopefully that will start landing uh, in between now and next bi-weekly, hopefully. Um, yeah, so that's the update. Um, yeah, I don't think there's more to that. I think that's it, yeah. yeah. As um, things get slowly but surely integrated into web UI, don't forget, you can always view kind of the cutting edge stuff, the bleeding edge sounds kind of gross, but webui.ipfs.io. We'll always pull from what's in master. So if you want to kind of get a sneak peek, that option is always there for you. Yeah. And you, if you are using IPFS Companion, you can go to preferences and there's an experiment when you can opt in to the latest version. So instead of using the hard coded version with your, which ships with your Go IPFS, uh, you can opt in uh, into the latest web UI. So you don't need to update go ipfs to a leading edge version you can use a stable version but just like try web ui um i believe that's it i don't think we got any more highlights i think that's all we've got yeah uh stay tuned i'd say uh, yeah. it will be slow like it will be shorter quarter uh we plan some vacation at the end of it uh so but hopefully uh, some stuff will land before the end of the year and yeah. uh, we will mention that on this call. Yeah, full disclosure between all the winter holidays, um, you know, those of us in the States, as you can tell by my funny accent, have a few days off this week, um, all the sort of winter holiday stuff. And then obviously the uh, annual planning that we bring, that we brought up at the beginning of this meeting um, is a very useful, very helpful, but also rather detailed and somewhat time consuming process. And yeah. Um, that I believe is it. We can welcome Raphael to see if he uh, has anything to join before we end. We're, we're actually wrapping up, dude. <laughs> Great timing, just to say bye. Hello, how was the meeting? <laughs> so hello and goodbye, everybody. I might as well might as well stop the recording. Thank you to anybody who may be watching this async. Let's slowly wave to people who are watching and see you in two weeks. Thank <laughs> you.